Welcome to FreshMaya.com. My name is Eric, and I'm going to show you how to duplicate, group, and undo. Let's start out by creating a polygon cube. So I'm going to go up my Create menu, down to Polygon Primitives, and I'm going to click on Cube. Now, if you messed around with any of the options in the Options box, you can reset that by reopening your options. Go over to your Edit, and then down to where it says Reset Settings, you can click that, and it will reset everything back to the default values. You click on create, there's our cube. I'm going to go ahead and change this back to shaded mode. So I'm going to go to my view panels menu bar under shading and click on smooth shade all. I'm going to zoom in. All right, I'm just going to click on somewhere other than my cube to, to deselect this cube. Now, if you notice, we can't see our edges very good, especially the one right here. If you want to see the edges and your wireframe and the smooth shade, go to your shading menu and about halfway down you'll see wireframe on shaded. Just click that, and now you can see the wireframe and the shaded on your object. Okay, to duplicate is very simple. There's a couple of ways you can do it. Select your cube, go up to the Edit menu, and go all the way down to where it says Duplicate. Click on it, and it duplicated your object right on top of the other object. So what you need to do is use your Move tool to move it out of the way. Again, select the object, Edit, Go down to duplicate, click, and then use your move tool to move it out of the way. You can also use a shortcut, which is selecting an object, holding down the control button on your keyboard, which is the button with CTRL written on it. Then you, with that help button held down, you can now press the letter D, and it duplicates it. Use the move tool to move it out of the way. Okay, we can select more than one item to duplicate. So instead of duplicating one at a time, you could duplicate two at a time, or three at a time, or all of them at a time. To select more than one object, if you just click on the different objects, you're only going to get one at just one. To select more than one object, press and hold down the Shift button on your keyboard, and now you can add to that selection by clicking on other objects. When you're done, just let go of the Shift button, and now to duplicate all three of those items, we can go to our Edit menu, and then go down to Duplicate, or we can press and hold down the Control button on our keyboard, and then press the letter D and then use our move tool to move those out of the way. So pretty simple, that's how you duplicate. Let's delete all these and talk about grouping. We can delete all these by selecting one at a time and then press and hold down the shift to select all the other ones. Another way to do it is you can click in one corner of your view panel and just hold your left mouse button down and now you can drag your mouse to the opposite corner and you'll see this dotted line appear. Everything inside that dotted line will be selected when you let go of the left mouse button. Like so. And now you can press the delete button to delete them all. Okay, let's create a polygon primitives cone. I'm going to use the scale tool. Scale it in the Y direction. Or to scale it along the Y axis. Something about like that. Go back up to the Create menu, Polygon Primitives, let's create a sphere. I'm going to use my Move tool. Actually, I'm just going to scale that up. I'm going to use my Move tool now to lower that down. So now we have an upside down ice cream cone. Now, I'm going to duplicate these. I'm going to select both items. I'm just going to left click, drag to create that dotted line. That way I can select both objects a little bit easier, quicker. I'm going to duplicate those. Control D, and I'm going to use my move tool to move it out of the way. Now, if we don't do something about this ice cream cone, our ice cream is going to fall out, and that would be kind of a waste. So we need to rotate this around so it's pointing the other direction. If I select both these items and use my rotate tool, let's just kind of zip, go around here and let's rotate it. You'll see it doesn't really work all that well. So we could rotate it around, and then we could use our Move tool to try to move it up and line it up. But an easier way would be to group this together and then rotate them both so they rotate and stay together. So let me go ahead and select this over here, and I'm going to delete it. <clears throat> to group together, select the items that you want to group. So I want to group both these objects together. I'm going to go up to the Edit menu. I'm going to go down and click on Group. 
and the shortcut is Control G. So you can press and hold down the Control button and then press the letter G. Once they're grouped together, we can use our rotate tool. But before we do that, if you look, my manipulator handle is way over here. It's not in the center of our object. So to get that in the center of your object, go up to your Modify menu and look for Center Pivot. Click on Center Pivot, and it will put your manipulator handle into the center of your object. So now we can use our Rotate tool, and since these are grouped together, we can rotate them and they won't come apart. Now if you accidentally unselected, if you click on a part of your cone, you'll know it's separate to, to select the whole group. Just select one part of your group and then press the up arrow button on your keyboard. And it selects the whole group. And now we can finish rotating. If you look over here in a channel box, you'll see the rotate Z is at negative 145. You can actually type values in the channel box. So we go over here to the rotate Z. We could click in that side of that field, and now we can use our keyboard to type in zero. Or 180 degrees will be opposite. So you could rotate, or you could use your channel box to actually type in specific values. All right, let's do that one more time. I'm going to select those objects, press the delete button on my keyboard to delete them. I'm going to create a cone, so create polygon primitives cone. I'm going to scale that up with my scale tool. I'm going to create a polygon primitive sphere. Scale it up so we got a nice big piece of ice cream there. I'm going to use my move tool to move that down. I'm going to group them together by selecting both objects. And I did that just by left clicking on my screen, holding my left mouse button down, and dragging my mouse to the opposite corner and then letting go and it selects both those objects. Now I can go to edit, click on group, or I can press and hold down the letter, the control button on my keyboard and then press the letter G and that groups them together. And then if you want your manipulator handle in the center of your object, go up to modify and click on center pivot. Now you can use your rotate tool to move. If you accidentally unclick, just click on one part of your object, press the up arrow button and that selects the whole group. And now you can rotate or you can just type in a value in your channel box. And that's how you group, that's how you duplicate, and the only thing left now is how to undo. Let's say you did something and you wanted to undo your last action. You can simply do that by going to the edit menu and clicking on undo. And every time you do that, it undoes the last action that you did. And you can go back 50 times because Maya has a default. Maya will memorize up to 50 actions that you do. And so you can use the undo feature up to 50 times before it runs out of things to undo. The shortcut is press and hold down the control button and then pressing the letter Z. And you can just can keep doing that until you go back and run out of stuff to undo. Have we done 50 things yet? Yes. If you look down here in the com in my uh, command lines, you'll see it says error. There are no more commands to undo. That's because we ran out of um, undos that Maya memorized. Now later on in future videos, I will show you how you can change those settings to tell Maya to memorize more than 50 or less than 50 or to even change it to infinite where Maya will memorize every single thing you do from the time you open up Maya to the time you close Maya. And that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.